also they live in still on YouTube looking at videos related to Dead Ahead and they could not find a single guy for Dead Ahead skirmish game mode. So why aren't people making any? Well, I believe it is due to this game having a built-in tutorial, which I suggest you try out if you still have no knowledge over the game's controls. This tutorial will be talking about every single aspect you need to know about Dead Ahead skirmish game mode. That includes the primary objective of the game mode, the ships and their weaponry, and a lot more. And like always, timestamps are listed in the description of the video, in case you want to fast forward to a certain part you would like to know. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now the skirmish game mode is considered to be the standard game mode, being the one gets played twice in the gameplay cycle. The primary objective is simple, sink all of the enemy ships. Sinking a ship is relatively simple, this causes much damage to it. Whether it be by battery shells, torpedoes, bombs or hell, anti-aircraft even works. Not sure why you'd use anti-aircraft to damage a ship though, considering it does 1.667% damage of a secondary battery shell. Ships in the game also don't have health indicators, but it isn't that much of a problem since you can tell that a certain part of a ship is heavily damaged if there is visible rust. Of course, there are two teams, the Orion Fleet and the Antares Armanda. Each team is given four ships at the start of the game. The aircraft carrier, a cruiser, a destroyer, and the battleship. They are all spawned next to one another and are on the opposite side of the opposing team as well. When the player spawns, the player has a choice to choose which ship to spawn in, which makes switching ships relatively simple by just resetting and spawning on the ship of your choice. Obviously, if a ship is already sunk, the player won't be able to spawn on that specific ship. Now, in the start of each skirmish round, each player can vote on what map they want to play on. The one that gets the most votes is the map they will get played on. There are a total of four maps, Polar, Islands, Strait, and Ocean. Polar is a map set at night time where you can traverse two icebergs or use them as cover. Due to the map being set at night, it can be quite hard to spot enemy aircraft. Islands is a map with, well, islands, which surprisingly you can actually walk on. Same with the icebergs on Polar, however, I'm not sure why you want to get on the island, I mean, it's not like you're helping your team in any way by doing so. Just stay on your ships. Straight is basically the same map as islands, except instead of islands, it has big rocks. As for ocean, there are no islands or any obstacles in the way to reverse to or take cover. Instead, the ocean map is clouded with mist, making finding enemy ships super hard. When in any of these maps, be sure to use the environment to your advantage, to help you achieve victory. Now before we actually start talking about the ships, let's first talk about the armaments. Now if you didn't know, the dev from this game gives a detailed explanation for each armament, but I'm gonna try my best to summarize it as simple as possible. First we have turrets. These are your main sources of damage against enemy ships. There are three batteries in the game. Cruiser batteries, battleship batteries, and secondary batteries. Cruiser batteries can fire three shells that do a total of 2500 damage per shell and fire on 7 rounds per minute. The battleship battery of the Orion fleet can fire 3 shells that do 8000 damage per shell. As for the Antares, their battleship battery can fire 2 shells that do 9000 damage. Both of them fire around 3 rounds per minute. As for the secondary batteries, they can come in either single or dual mounts. Each of the shells do 1500 damage and can sometimes even cause fires. You can do massive amounts of damage over time if not put out using the fire extinguishers placed on the ship. You can equip the fire extinguishers by just walking close to the fire extinguisher and pressing Q. Now the controls for the turret are pretty simple. WASD for traversing the turret, X for turning on vertical aim, R to reset the turrets to its original position, F to fire, shift to be able to aim slowly, and for the battleship batteries, you can press G to fire spotter shells, which won't do any damage, however, they serve as an indicator of where the shell would land if you were to fire. Again, if you still haven't tried out the inbuilt tutorial of the game, please try it out, it'll help a ton. Keep in mind that turrets are also not accurate, so keep all of this in mind when using a turret, cause it's pretty obvious by now that if you do not hit your shot, you won't do any damage. Next we have anti-aircraft guns, commonly referred to as AA. These are used to target, well, aircraft, and barely do any damage to ships, other than one-shotting players if you manage to land a shot. There are three anti-aircraft guns in the game, light anti-aircraft guns, medium anti-aircraft guns, and heavy airburst anti-aircraft guns. Light anti-aircraft guns do 25 damage per shell and fire around 450 rounds per minute per gun. It can come in either single or dual mounts. Medium anti-aircraft guns do 50 damage per shell, firing around 175 rounds per minute per gun. It can come in either twin or quad mounts. And we have the heavy air burst anti-aircraft gun, which unlike the other anti-aircraft guns doesn't fire rapidly, instead firing 50 rounds per minute, and instead of only being able to do damage directly, which if you manage to land your shot you would do a whopping 150 damage, this gun does air burst damage, which if contacted with the plane parts, will do a total of 10 damage per plane part each, which makes it super deadly towards aircraft. Controlling the anti-aircraft is relatively simple by just using the mouse to aim and pressing left click to fire. There's also a trick where you can equip your binoculars while firing the anti-aircraft. 
to be able to focus on the enemy a lot easier. Also keep in mind that your shots take time to reach the enemy, which means it would be a lot better if you aimed in the direction the enemy aircraft is heading towards, rather than putting your crosshair directly on the enemy while firing. Next up we have torpedoes, which are basically bombs that travel through water. Their speed is around 150 and they do a whopping 5000 damage, so you do not want to get hit by a torpedo. Luckily, you still have a chance to dodge the torpedo if you're skillful enough to drive your way out of the torpedo's direction, since when the torpedo is deployed, they will move in only one direction. When you deploy your torpedo, there will be an indicator that shows the torpedo's location. The enemy, on the other hand, will only be able to see a trail of water left behind. So be cautious of anything you may see on the water, for it could be a torpedo about to hit your ship and do massive amounts of damage. In skirmish game mode, there are torpedo launchers which will launch torpedoes in the direction you are aiming on by pressing F. It will also take a relatively long time to reload, and since it takes a long time to reach the enemy ships, you can try aiming in the direction the enemy ships are heading towards for a guaranteed hit. Next we have bombs, which are dropped from dive bomber aircraft and do a whopping 4000 damage to enemy ships. Next we have rangefinders, which weirdly enough are not mentioned in the game's tutorial despite playing quite a large role in the gameplay. So the point of a rangefinder is to find the range for a group of turrets. To use a rangefinder, you must get on the seat mostly located on the bridge of the ship you are on. However, some secondary rangefinders are located where the rangefinders are. Once you are on the rangefinder, you can move your mouse onto the ship you want to find the range of. Then you can click left click to find the range. Once you mark the range, other teammates will be able to see the area you marked, allowing them to easily set the range for their batteries and land a clear shot. Keep in mind that it is best to keep marking the range since the distance between you and the enemy can change rapidly. Each ship has their own rangefinder, whether it be the main battery rangefinder for that specific ship or the secondary rangefinder. Like the anti-aircraft, you can use your binoculars to zoom in and mark the enemy a lot easier. There are also scout planes for the battleship and the cruiser, which are basically flying rangefinders which act the same as a normal rangefinder by marking a ship by left-clicking the ship you want to mark. And finally, we have spotlights, which are arguably the most useless part of a ship. They are only useful in one map and that's finding aircraft in Polar, since it's quite hard to find aircraft due to the map being set at night. Basically, you sit on it and press F to turn on the spotlight. But to be honest, you're better off using anti-aircraft guns to fire on two ships than actually use the spotlight. And now that we've finally talked about the armaments, we can now talk about the actual ships. Now if you haven't noticed by now, the ships in each team are actually different from one another in terms of looks and weaponry. Though the stats balance each other out, so each ship has basically the same firepower. First off, we have the destroyer, classified in the whole classification system as DD. You might want to remember this because people use this system a whole ton in the game chat. For the Orion Republic, the destroyer is nicknamed Lambda. Forgive me if I pronounce any of the names wrong. The Lambda is armed with two double torpedo launchers, three double secondary batteries, one twin medium AA, two twin light AAs, and four single light AAs. As for the Antares Imperium, the destroyer is nicknamed the Caerulus. Their destroyer is armed with three triple torpedo launchers, two single secondary batteries, one twin medium AA, two twin light AAs, and four single light AAs. There is also a secondary rangefinder in the bridge of the destroyer. Also, the destroyer is the fastest ship in the game and the lowest in health, which makes the ship an obvious glass cannon, which is exactly why this ship is not recommended to be the one tanking all the hits, but instead having a run and gun play style, due to the torpedoes being able to shoot from far distances. As for the anti-aircraft, this ship does fairly well, especially with the twin medium AA positioned in a strategic spot to be able to target all areas. This ship is most often used for flanking due to its low health but insane maneuverability and firepower. Next up, we have the cruiser classified as CA. For the Orion Republic, their cruiser is nicknamed the Kappa. The Kappa is armed with four cruiser batteries, four twin secondary batteries, one twin heavy airburst AA, two single heavy airburst AAs, two quad medium AAs, two twin medium AAs, and eight twin light AAs. As for the Antares Imperium, their cruiser is nicknamed the Rubrum. The Rubrum is armed with four cruiser batteries, three twin secondary batteries, one twin heavy airburst AA, two single heavy airburst AAs, two twin medium AAs, two triple medium AAs, and eight single light AAs. There is also a secondary rangefinder near the middle, a main rangefinder in the bridge, and a scout plane on both variants of the cruiser. Judging by the stats and qualities of the cruiser, we can easily tell it is meant to be an aggressive ship, being able to take on a lot of hits and display heavy amounts of firepower, mainly from its cruiser batteries. The cruiser on its own can take down all the ships in the game if given a good captain and crew. Next up, we have the battleship, classified as BB. For the Orion Republic, their battleship is nicknamed Mesa. The Mesa is armed with three triple battleship batteries, four single secondary batteries, four double secondary batteries, 
two twin heavy Airbus AAs, four single heavy Airbus AAs, four quad medium AAs, and 12 twin light AAs. As for the entire Imperium, their battleship is nicknamed Tau. The Tau is armed with four double ship batteries, six double secondary batteries, two twin heavy Airbus AAs, four single heavy Airbus AAs, five triple medium AAs, and ten twin light AAs. The maze has two secondary rangefinders while the Tau has one. Both ships have one main rangefinder in the bridge and a scout plane on both variants of the battleship. Judging by the stats and qualities of the battleship, it seems the battleship is a ship that is mainly used to absorb incoming fire while also being able to display heavy amounts of firepower, mainly through its main batteries. It is also filled to the brim with anti-aircraft guns making sure that any aircraft that even attempts to lay a finger on the battleship is sure to be demolished. And finally, we have the aircraft carrier classified as CV. Not AC, CV. For the Arab Republic, their aircraft carrier is nicknamed Rigel. The Rigel is armed with two double secondary batteries, six single secondary batteries, four single heavy Airbus AAs, one quad medium AA, and 12 double light AAs. As for the Antares Imperium, their aircraft carrier is nicknamed Scorpius Alpha. The Scorpius Alpha is armed with two double secondary batteries, six single secondary batteries, four single heavy Airbus AAs, one triple medium AA, and 12 medium AAs. There is a secondary rangefinder in the bridge of both aircraft carriers. By the stats and qualities, you can easily tell this ship is not meant for ship versus ship combat but rather maintaining air support. However, this ship does surprisingly well with anti-aircraft. The Rigel having 17 months dedicated to just anti-aircraft weaponry, but this ship is of course meant to maintain air superiority, being the supplier of ammunition for all aircraft. If the aircraft carrier goes down, all the aircraft in your team are basically useless without bombs and ammunition other than kamikaze onto enemy ships which is supposed to be a last resort. Which is exactly why this ship is supposed to stay away from the front lines, but not too far, so the aircraft on your team can easily fly back and resupply the ammunition. As for the aircraft itself, the aircraft carrier contains 3 attack aircraft, 5 dive bombers, 6 torpedo bombers and 5 fighters. The spawner plane, head near the bridge of the carrier. There will be an area displaying 4 buttons for you to press. Press Q on the aircraft you want to deploy. This won't work if the deployment time is on cooldown. By doing so, the aircraft will spawn on deck and you'll be teleported onto the aircraft. Then press E and you'll be on the aircraft. Surprisingly, the inbuilt tutorial doesn't teach you how to use the aircraft, but instead, when you get on the aircraft in-game, there will be a list of controls listed in the left side of your screen. Basically, press P to start the engine. Note that when you are flying, do not press P again or you'll disable your engines causing you to fall into the depths below. You can press Q and E to roll left and right, S and W to pitch up and down, A and D to your left and right, shift to increase speed, control to decrease speed, R to resupply when you are near your team's aircraft carrier. Keep in mind you do not have to land on the aircraft carrier to resupply. All you have to do is fly close to your team's aircraft carrier. You should drop ordnance, which works for the dive bomber and the torpedo bomber, X to enter cross air mode, which works for the attack aircraft and fighter, and G to turn the gears on and off. Know that you'll want to turn the gears off when flying and turn the gears on when you're about to land on the carrier. You can land on the carrier by turning on gears and pressing P to turn off the engine just as you are flying on the surface of the aircraft carrier. Now that we've finally talked about the controls, we can start talking about each of the aircraft. Starting with the dive bomber. The dive bomber is mounted with a bomb and is around 200 speed. Now the job of a dive bomber is to, well, dive and bomb. The reason you'd want to dive and drop the bomb instead of flying close by and dropping it is as the wiki puts it, bombs have a risk of bouncing. So diving reduces the known downward momentum of bombs, making them more accurate. Diving also makes the bomb trajectory simpler. To put it simply, it's way easier to dive and bomb. Also make sure that when you drop the bomb, pitch up as much as you can so you don't ram your aircraft onto the ship or the water. After you do so, return to your aircraft to resupply and continue the cycle of dive bombing over and over. Also be aware of anti-aircraft since you do need to enter the line of fire from enemy ships to drop the bombs. Next up we have torpedo bombers. The torpedo bomber is mounted with a torpedo and is slightly slower than a bomber having 175 speed. The job of torpedo bomber is similar to that of a dive bomber. But instead of bombs, you drop torpedoes. To drop the torpedo, you must be at an altitude roughly around the superstructure of a ship. Then press B and the torpedo will be launched. Keep in mind that torpedoes still take time to reach enemy ships. You still have to lead your shot onto a position that will be sure to hit the ship. Once you do so, return to your aircraft carrier to resupply and continue the cycle. Next we have attack aircraft. The attack aircraft is mounted with 6 rockets, each doing around 1000 damage. But unlike bombs, these rockets do not bounce around. The rockets can also cause fires, doing 50 damage per second. It is also the same speed as a bomber. It is best used against weak ships that go down easily like the destroyer, since the fires are relatively hard to put out, and the missiles can also take down a handful of players on the enemy ship. 
You can even use this to one-shot players on enemy aircraft if you're feeling like it, since the missiles basically insta-kill any kind of aircraft. And finally, we have the fighter. The fighter is mounted with a gun in its front being able to shoot 500 rounds per minute, doing 25 damage per shell and a whopping speed of 300 stuts per second. The fighter is obviously meant for plane versus plane combat due to its speed, its weaponry, and hell, its mere look is devastating to any aircraft that even attempts to fly by this monster. Of course, its gun only holds 800 rounds, so you'll still have to resupply on your aircraft carrier. When flying the fighter, you'll want to stay as far as possible from enemy ships, because you basically can't do anything against them other than kamikaze or, I guess, you can try to shoot the players on board down. It's just really risky where you are meant to be shooting down enemy aircraft since fighters are key to maintaining air superiority. If you manage to shoot down at least one aircraft on the enemy team, you are already doing your team a huge service. A good player on a fighter aircraft can be a real pain to the enemy team and turn the tide of battle. Congratulations! You practically now know everything about Dead Ahead Skirmish Game Mode. From the ships, to the aircraft, to the weaponry, I hope this guy was somewhat helpful to you and fun to watch. If you'd like to see more content made by me, Feel free to click subscribe and press the like button. See ya.